Hussaberg is a name that means a lot to a few, but little to most. It's a textbook case of corporate takeovers, of brilliant engineering teams that can't seem to figure out selling their own product. And it's also a textbook case of betrayal. But to understand why and how could a small team of engineers catch such a bad luck streak, we have to go back in time and talk about Husqvarna. It's 1988 and the Swedish brand was going for some uh, difficulties. As a final solution, they get acquired by Kajiva, an Italian motorcycle manufacturer. Unfortunately, the acquisition also means that the entire Swedish team was going to have to move to Varese in Italy. Now, you might understand why that was not such an appealing process for most employees. You have a family, friends, connections, and to move across the continent just for a job? I can imagine the Italian proposition wasn't that popular. So a lot of them stayed behind. You see, as part of the original Husky team, there were a lot of really passionate engineers. And soon after the bad news hit, a group led by an engineer called Thomas Gustafsson decided to continue the legacy and build their own dirt bike. They had the know-how, so it kind of made sense. No matter if your goal is a championship title, a fun afternoon at the local racetrack, or just a relaxing trip out into the countryside, the Husaberg Miracle Machine provides all the power you could possibly need. They didn't have a sales team or any time to prepare business plans, but they had the passion, the drive. Another thing they lacked was actually a name. You see, Thomas tried signing up for a local race with a prototype they were developing, but found himself in a conundrum. Hey, uh, I want to register for the race. Uh, your name please, sir? Thomas Gustafsson. Mm -hmm. What uh, motorcycle do you use? It, it's my own bike. I, uh, I built it. What bike? No, it, it's a prototype. I, I built it. What manufacturer? A motorcycle? It's not built by anyone. I, I built it. Who built the bike? Uh, 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 Hussaberg? What? Hussa... Hussaberg? Hussaberg, yes. Hussaberg. Hussaberg's Ude was the little village in which the magic was being born. And so, it was a fitting name. For their first efforts, they developed a big, yet really light frame for their dirt bike. You know, it's funny, because a lot of people seem to remember the Bergs as these huge machines. Not heavy, just big. Big enough to where being a shorter rider could pose some problems. Anyway, these guys knew what they were doing. In fact, they were so good that they managed to win two constructor titles with their F3350 and FE501 models just a few years after the company was born. That's impressive even for today's standards. You see, nobody can ever blame the Berg team for being bad at engineering, for not innovating. They were masters of their craft and held themselves to the highest of standards. Fortunately, no matter how good your product is, there will always be a couple hurdles that any startup must jump over. One, a dealer network. People who buy bikes, especially dirt bikes, will need a lot of parts and need them quick. It's a destructive sport and having access to components is tough, especially when you're a young, up-and-coming startup. But that was not Husaberg's biggest problem. Their main issue were sales. The core team was mainly formed out of engineers. And let me tell you something, engineers are pretty bad salesmen. What I'm trying to say is, they were not the best at promoting and selling their bikes. And so cash flow was a real issue and it got to the point where enthusiasm alone could not drive the company forward any longer. And all this after just seven years led them to being acquired by KTM. And this, this is the point where the Swedish soul started to get ripped out of Husaberg. First, KTM totally rips off their slogan of ready to race. Yeah, that was not an Austrian original catchphrase. It was Husabergs to begin with. So the Swedes need to come up with something else. And they come up with four-stroke force, which to me sounds more like a sexual innuendo than a motorcycle slogan, but to each their own. It makes sense, they only made four strokes and were pretty good at it, but you know, I feel like other terms could have been more um, evocative. What's also really evocative is you clicking that subscribe button down below. Thanks. The thing is, while some of their identity was gone after the acquisition, 
They were still a great core engineering team and they were allowed to innovate further. And so between 95 and 98, Husaberg manages to collect 3 out of 4 available motocross titles. But KTM kept chipping away some of that Swedish identity and in 2003 decides to move production and R&D to its Austrian factory in Mattekhofen. At least they kept the motorsport division in Sweden, but uh, at this point you could start to see a pattern emerging. The reality is, Husaberg helped the Austrians quite a bit in developing their four-stroke platform. In fact, while not official, the RFS engine that the pumpkins used was highly inspired from Husaberg's own power plant. And at this point, that was the thing. Husaberg wasn't just a rebranded KTM, they were the innovators. If you wanted the highest level of technology, you would buy a Berg, not an orange machine. And in 08, they come out with a revolutionary engine. This 2009 product is very revolutionary. The thing just pivots on a dime and it's really, really amazing. But it all started with the motor, the 70 degree inclined cylinder. It doesn't handle like any other off-road 450 on the market. It's, uh, it's a whole new way to build a motorcycle engine. I think it's going to stay unique because the, the people behind it are really passionate about Husaberg and Husaberg first. This power unit was really powerful, but because of its configuration, it made the bikes really easy to handle. It made the 500cc 4-stroke feel like an equivalent 350. You see, KTM used Husaberg in a noble way, a way that was close to its roots, as a test platform, a place where the newest innovations could hit the market. If that 70-degree engine was such a revolution, why don't we see them today? You see, it goes back to the fact that not every good engineering marvel is a good business decision. The reality is that for as good as it was, it was extremely expensive to produce and develop forwards. And well, just as we saw previously, any engineering marvel needs to make financial sense. And this didn't. So in 2013, the KTM group axed the 70 degree engine platforms. We did skip a few years though, and a few really important ones. Bikes like a 394 stroke get released, which, if you think about it, is the predecessor of one of the best dirt bikes available today, the KTM 350. The two stroke markets are growing, and Husaberg wants to be top of the line of the racing enduro segment, so it's quite simple. We're adding some two strokes to the line, and we're doing it in a really good Husaberg way. In 2010, their first two-stroke models show up on the showroom floors and they dominate racing. Event after event, win after win. It might seem that these were almost glory days for Husaberg, but in reality, it was just a high before the drop. You see, indeed, the Bergs did dominate the two-stroke racing world at that time, but it wasn't because of the machine, it was because of the rider. My expectations for this year is hopefully to finish all the events first of all, but after coming second so many times, I've sort of only got one more place to aim for, so especially in the outdoors, I'm just aiming to win every time, really. These two strokes were mainly rebadged KDMs. They shared a lot of parts. Husaberg was the name, but the soul was Austrian. Remember how I said that in 2013 the 70 degree engine got axed? Decisions like that don't just happen overnight. And indeed, this wasn't the case here either. What also happened in 2013 was that KTM acquired Husqvarna. Coincidence? Kinda doubt it because that same year, KTM makes this announcement. Let me translate this for you. Now KTM owns Husaberg and Husqvarna. Since Husaberg was born out of Husqvarna, the rebirth of Huskies can only mean one thing, and that's merging Husaberg back into Husqvarna. In real talk terms, Husaberg just caught the axe. You know what's even more sadistic? This was announced on the 25 year anniversary of Husaberg. You see, while being owned by the Austrians, 
the birds were allowed to innovate, to be different, and yet now they were gone. Simply because their name just wasn't as relevant as Husqvarna. KTM saying that Husqvarna was reborn is sort of like being a parent and saying you're welcoming your older child back into your home. This child had some drug issues, ran away from home, wasn't the most loving one, but he was a cool kid. And sure, you do welcome the older brother back for rehab, but you do that by kicking the younger brother out. The smart kid, the one that got good grades but was never popular. That's kind of the sad part but also the reality of business. It's too rare that an engineering team can win at this game just by having a good product. Yes, that's unfortunate, but it's also the truth. It's sad how these teams got screwed over time and time again, when they had to leave Husqvarna, when they were forced to move to Austria, when their revolutionary 70 degree engine got shut down. They were smart, innovative, yet every single time they kept picking the short straw. And so with this, Husaberg joins the likes of Michael, Osa and others. Brands that really had something going for them, but somehow it was never enough. I don't want to end this video on a sad note though. Well, yes, the ending is pretty tragic. Husaberg did live a good life. The fact that they managed to grow to the point of being acquired by KTM is a big achievement, while also winning titles at that point. Also the fact that for so many years, the Austrians allowed Husaberg to innovate, to create, to be different. That has to be celebrated, and they did create quite some icons in this time. Yes, the ending was a tragedy. But at least they got to do their own thing. If Husaberg was a person, yeah, they would have died young by a tragic incident, but their life would have been a life of fulfillment, a life where they left their print on the industry while it lasted. Thanks all a lot for watching this video. Make sure to check out the other story about KTM, Husqvarna and Gas Gas. Subscribe to the channel. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.